Welcome, listeners. Our guest tonight is acclaimed pop star Gigi Rowe, and we are proud to have her. In the beginning of this episode, you'll hear her song, You, Me, and the Stars, which was featured on Amazon Prime show, The One That Got Away, and also Netflix show, Boo Bitch. So please be sure to listen to that and stay tuned towards the end for her single, which is releasing the same day this episode. Thank you for listening and enjoy the episode. Open the door for me, I guess it's real, I'm driving away. Your kiss is lingering on my lips, it's something I can taste. I'm in the back of the cab watching you disappear from me. Welcome to Maniacal Music Musings, and this is guaranteed to be an excellent episode. You know me, your host, Jeremy Bryant, and you know my co-host, the Chanty Greif. We are both lost in that demon fate life, and then we straddled down the river of dreams to find this show, and it became a masterpiece. Chanty, how you doing today, good sir? It's a good day. Doing pretty good. How about yourself, bud? It's been one of those days, but doing this show always brightens my mood and makes me better, so I'm happy. Same. Yeah, it's definitely a highlight of my day. And I'm extremely happy because of our guest tonight, pop sensation Gigi Rowe with music from Netflix and Amazon show. Amazon Amazon shows. (laughs) (laughs) And... A couple albums, a couple albums coming out. An album coming out soon, I believe. Is that not right, Gigi? Yes, I have an album coming out. It's called Laura, which is my real name, 
And I have a lot of new music coming out also with a very special collaborator, Clay Baby, who happens to be in my silver Mustang with me right now. And so um, and so much great music that's, you know, coming out. I can't wait to share it. Different vibes. And i um, excited to get to chat, chat about it with you guys. Yes, we are very excited to talk about this with you, too, because we're going to start with your album. And I'll get into why I'm so happy about that in a minute. But we always okay. let the artists, the, our guests, no matter who it is, uh, tell, tell us about their CD first and why it means so much to them. Yeah, you know, this um, just really speaks to where I come from as an artist. I come from being a singer-songwriter from New Jersey. I was inspired by 90s female powerhouses like Alanis Morissette and Joan Osborne. That really inspired me to write my own songs and got my first record deal. It was just me and a guitar and that magic kind of running all over New York City, playing my songs for anyone that, you know, would listen. And um, I've been through the highs and lows of the music industry and it sort of an epic journey and a roller coaster and at this moment in time it just felt really cool to be able to kind of take take it back to my roots and put out music and songs that have meant a lot to me and that have been created over a period of years and that I've worked on with you know really special collaborators so here it is and the CD you decided to bring was I decided to bring um, Billy Joel's River of Dreams because it was my first CD that I ever bought. In the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep, through the jungle of doubt, to the river so deep, I know I'm searching for something, something so undefined, that it can only be seen by the eyes of the blind, in the middle of the night. understand I could, I could definitely appreciate that chancy what did you think of mr oh i'm not sure you have more say on it be my guest oh Gigi. sorry I, I thought chancy was about <laughs> to say something sorry. um no i just honestly <laughs> that cd um meant a lot to me i remember going to jack's music shop in red bank new jersey with my dad and thinking at the time that for my very first cd i wanted something that was iconic that was timeless and it was kind of funny to me that I can remember thinking that to this day. I was in a dance class and we had a dance number that we were doing to River of Dreams. So I think that's why I was drawn to Billy Joel. And I remember going to sleep every night listening to the lullaby that he wrote for his daughter. So that meant a lot as well. All right. Damn. All right. I can definitely see that. But did 
Did you say Red Bank, New Jersey? I did, yes. Which, for people like me who are Kevin Smith fans, that town means something to us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> town. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the home of the secret stash. Woo. I'm it's where that's where I first started going to coffee shops and playing my music and um yeah it's been crazy you know to think about those days and where I'm at today and um I feel like I've been getting so many opportunities to kind of take it back to where I started and it's amazing to get to work with cool people like Play Baby is sitting right next to me and um work on so many different musical vibes but at the end of the day, it always comes back to, you know, chasing a feeling and telling a story. And that's what I really admire in an artist like Billy Joel and what he did with that album, what that album meant for me and where I started as a songwriter. And that's really carried me to where I'm at right now. Well, Chancey, what do you think of GGCD? Honestly, uh, you know how earlier I was talking about all these synchronicities that keep occurring with this week and with this episode, they still continue because uh, Gigi had mentioned uh, Alanis Morissette. And before I chose the album that I chose, my runner up was going to be Jagged Little Pill. Oh my gosh, I love that. I mean, and, that album, a songwriter. Right? And, uh, so here's the interesting synchronicities that I was talking to Jeremy about. Um, I actually used to care or help take care of uh, an elderly woman who was dying of cancer. And uh, she was this badass biker bitch, and she was awesome. And she would not like she was one of those types that like was always too old, too young to be called a grandma. So she told her grandkids to call her Gigi. And then Jeremy tells me that our guest's name is Gigi. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Oh, I love that. She and then. Like a woman. Oh, she was fucking spit fire. She was like 90 pounds, feared nothing and was epic. Amazing. And your album that you chose um, happens to be one of the favorite artists of the person who introduced me to the band for my album, who is actually going to be the subject of part of my interview on Harvey's podcast, uh, Men Are the Prize. Oh, wow. So all of these things just tie in together for this today. And while this one was not my favorite Billy Joel album, I am a small Billy Joel fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually had forgotten about River of Dreams. <laughs> I had always just remembered it from the radio and, and called it by in the middle of the night. Yes. And so like, I'm listening to the album and then all of a sudden it hits. I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> it's like midnight. And my girlfriend's like, what, what's going on? I was like, I forgot about this song. <laughs> Aww. I, okay, I love that I brought you back to River of Dreams. Right. It's a vibe, and um, it just really, like, stands the test of time, I think. For sure, for sure. But, yeah, that, that, that actually sums up my review. It was a really good trip down memory lane. I love that. Right? That was, like, the yep. album that popped in my head, because I it was just, like, a moment for me to to get that, and and I love it. And I got to say, I was not disappointed by this album either at all. I mean, when I first heard Billy Joel, I was like, ooh, which Billy Joel are we going with here? And like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm a Billy Joel fan, but not enough to ever know any of the CDs, really. Yeah. I like I like Billy Joel when I hear him on like the radio or on other people's playlists. And I'm like, okay, I like that song. Like, I know who he is, obviously. You get, you get to be deaf, dumb, and blind and not know who he is. But he's a goddamn master of music. And I mean... This I definitely found, I definitely found my top five in the CD without a problem. So it was not an issue at all. So what were your top five for this album, Gigi? The top well, you know, I feel like for me, 
it was River of Dreams and the Lullaby song. It just I always went between those two. Um, those are like those are those are the songs for me. I mean, that's what I've always been a song person, and I feel like even with albums that I love, where I'll listen to the album, I just always find myself like looping kind of my favorite songs, and I would have to kind of pick those two. So no other song, no other songs in the album really stuck out to you. I mean, those are the ones that have like really, really stayed with me um, over, you know, over the years, and those are the songs that pulled me back into into that album. The second that I was trying to think of, you know, moments in time where music really impacted me, and I remember having that that lullaby song on loop when I would go to sleep at night. And um, I think that that just pulled me into the pop side of things. I mean, River of Dreams is such a perfect pop record. And that lullaby song is so intimate. And I think that kind of sums up a lot of a lot of what I'm drawn to. The soulfulness, the intimacy, and then also the epicness. All right. I could respect that. And so she just basically what, pulled a pull, pulled a Jeremy where everything got in. It's just like there are these that are separated from the pack. Everything else is in. Yeah, I mean that's and that's, <laughs> how, I, that's how I've always been when I relate to music. Like I'm a song person, and when I relate to albums, it's it's always it's always me going back to certain songs, and sometimes I've kind of sat through and wanted to like listen to the album as a whole because it's nice to appreciate what the artist has chosen to put together but at the same time um i just always find myself you know drawn back to to singles and to the songs that i love so yeah clay have you ever listened to billy joel i'm 27 years old (laughs) no And there goes our Billy Joel fan base audience. <laughs> well, I appreciate the honesty anyway. <laughs> yes. We do go for honesty on the show, above all. And Chancey, well, speak, speak of your honesty, what's your top five? Well, this one's not going to be like my usual because I, ha- I, I hadn't had an opportunity to make Gigi's acquaintance ahead of time. And I didn't want to be too off-putting because usually i will come up with roasts for all albums like something i i try to come up with something well then but, you and clay will get along well if you like to roast things i uh i, I didn't i didn't go you know as anywhere near as hard in the paint as i knew as i usually do but my not my top five was it was pretty easy to pick for me um uh, number five for me was no man's land and it caught my attention because of when the album itself was released. The last, I'm not sure if you'd call it a, vo- a, a last verse or the last chorus sequence of that song. It goes, who remembers where it all began? And then it repeats every in between every line. It says out here in no man's land. So it goes, who remembers where it all began before the world was in our hands before the banner and the marching bands, low supply and high demand. And that wow. directly translates into right now. I agree. Uh, my number four is a, uh, a minor variation, which uh, I was listening to it and like I just was the whole time. It's just like fucking same, bud. Like I can relate. I can totally relate because it's all just about a mood and it's not the best of moods. And it's like, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that's kind of how I always look at everything. It's like, okay, this is good, but it's coming. Where's it at? Wait, so are, would you call yourself a pessimist? No, I'm a realist, but you have to be somewhat of a pessimist to be a realist. Heard. Hmm. I agree I with do, that. I do also at the same time consider myself to be a uh, terminally optimistic person. Ooh. Like I, I will I will look at it and call it exactly as it's seen, but 
at the same time, I always hope that there's a way to either resolve it or to make it better in some capacity. Like there's nothing that can't be fixed, even if it's broken. Okay, so I'm I'm hearing a lot of optimism there, which I yeah. can't do. Um, number three was Shades of Grey, and <laughs> and the reason behind that is because I myself am a huge sucker for uh, upbeat songs with like dark or dreary lyrics, like uh, pumped up kicks. Or uh, there's a, a band called uh, Polka Dot Cadaver. There's a song called Chloroform Girl. It's a very folksy, upbeat song. But the overall song itself is about a woman having been kidnapped. But like when you listen to it, you don't really realize what's going on until he kind of breaks into the chorus. And it's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Like you feel bad for enjoying everything up to the point. It's like, well, I mean, it's this is a good song. I'm already here. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. Um, number two was famous last words because I probably couldn't shut up if my life depended on it. So I'd probably have <laughs> some epically famous last words. And what would, wait, so, what would your famous last words be? That depends on the situation, really. I mean. If I had to stop and think of some, like, epic stuff that's going to be plastered on my tombstone. Actually, I know exactly what I want on my tombstone. Ooh. I know what I, I want on mine, too. I want uh, mine to fuck everybody. Nice. Nice. I want <laughs> mine... I, like I, <laughs> I want mine to be, like, just, like, a basic question about you know, the fundamental meaning of life, like, have you ever wondered what, you know, what your purpose on this planet is, and how, what the meaning of life is, and this, that, and the other, and at the very bottom, say, see other side for answer, and then have it not, and then, and then have it not be there. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Why is this reminding of the of the t-shirt that the guy was wearing in wow. Las Vegas. His shirt said, what did it say? Cremation's my last stop to... What the fuck was it? There was a guy, we were in Las Vegas yesterday, and a guy on a tram was wearing a t-shirt and it said, cremation, my last chance for a rockin' hot body. Yeah. <laughs> and he was with his wife, and they were this cute, like, couple, and I, we were just both like, oh my god, your t-shirt is amazing. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Yeah, but uh, And, They're of course, obviously, my number one is River of Dreams. Like, yay! I mean, as soon as I, as soon as it was just like, in the middle, I'm like, oh, Number one, where it's I'm writing you down. I mean, those melodies, oh, like everything dude. about it is iconic. It really is, and it's catchy. It's it's almost annoyingly catchy. You're just like... It was also before my time, by the way, as well, but I just love that. I wasn't calling y'all all. <laughs> oh, I'm, it's all right. I know. I know. I'm, I'm an old soul, and I'm also kind of long in the tooth, so it's okay. You are timeless. Um, I know who Billy Joel is. No, I know you do. I just love that when I was <laughs> like, you know, a, like a, a kid that my dance teacher chose River of Dreams as yeah. the song that we were doing in our dance class because it, in retrospect, just exposed me to classic music and an iconic artist that I, you know, wouldn't have known about otherwise at that age. Right. And that's why I was, could walk into a CD store and be like, yes, this is like, this feels important. I, can, I can't say the cover of that album is ever one I would pick up in a CD store. It, right. I mean, mine usually yeah. have like, dra mine have like dragons on them and shit, but. <laughs> mine didn't but, have yeah. dragons on them, but they had something. That can mean a lot of things, Nancy. But, all right. So, my top five for the CD, and I do have an honorable mention because I had to. And, Actually, yeah, one honorable mention. Because Lullaby is my honorable mention. Because it kind of reminded me of a stick song. Like, that's what maybe I'm like halfway through the song, I'm like, this sounds like the beginning of Sailing Away a little bit. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I, I can song. hear this. I know, I love this song too. So I was like, ooh, okay. Number five is all about soul. Ooh, that's yeah. That was a good one, yeah. 
That song's tempo was freaking amazing. So that reminds and me it's, of my grandmother, actually. And it's all about. I was gonna say it's all about. It's all about women's hardship. So I like that. I could dig that song. Like I definitely dug it. Number four is No Man's Land because it's a good opening track and it's just freaking. It's I've heard it before, obviously, but it's, it was just a good song and it was up higher at first, but other ones knock it down. And Chancy number three was Shades of Grey. Oh, we did it! You know what also is funny to me? It's also funny to me that this song or this album had ten songs on it. So it's like, fuck. <laughs> I gotta find. I gotta find five out of ten. I got, I got, you know, every other song. I'll just write down every other song. That was what I was thinking going into it. And then I was like, oh, shit. No Man's Land's awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that I got, that you, like, reconnected with this album. Yeah. And, and like, number two and number one I've heard before, of course. But, I mean, my de- my, my one of my parents had this album, so I believe, because I know I've seen the cover in their CD racks, like, when I was a kid. So I know they had this album. At least one of them did. But. Number two is Great Wall of China, because that song's freaking amazing. Always has been. And number one, of course, is obviously River of Dreams, because that's the best song on the city by far. <laughs> like, that's amazing. Yeah. River of Dreams is incredible. River of Dreams. I'm going to have to play this song for Clay as soon as we are off of this podcast. We're going to be like, I'm, interest, I'm curious, is this, was this, a, was this a situation where she picked the album and it was y'all's first time hearing it? Uh, um, she picked the album, yep. but I mean, I've heard songs have, off of I, it, I, but not the whole thing all the way through now. Top five kind of situation for y'all, like the, y'all's favorite five. Yeah. We, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, go okay. ahead, Jeremy. That's cool. We pick, yeah, we pick a, t- we, we, we pick a top five for um, every CD we bring on our show every 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 episode. So yeah, it's yeah. a it's kind of the point. It's 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 part of the point of the show, and it makes it more interesting because it makes us have to actually listen to the whole album and have like pay attention to it in a way, uh, rather than rather than have it in the background and like not really pay attention to it and be like, yeah, it's okay. We're on a radio show. This is so fun. Yes. I love this. No, it's really special to get to speak, to get to speak with both of you. And, Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you saying that. That's really nice. And no, I feel, and the pleasure is mine, honestly. I mean, it's awesome to have, you know, not only someone be excited to be on the show, but like, I mean, especially someone who you, I mean, you're signed, like you're, you don't have to do these kind of things, but yet you take the time to do it. And that says something. No, it's really, you know, Hey, I'm grateful to get to talk to you both. And you're both like so interesting and soulful and obviously like huge music lovers. So I love like getting to chat with all different kinds of people. I think that that's, that's part of what I love about my story and being an artist is that I get to connect with people of all ages, of all walks of life, from all places, and the adventures that music has taken me on are just incredible. Even just the where the moment that I'm in right now, like we're having just one of one of those magical rock and roll days of having just come from playing music and being with friends and being in Los Angeles and really like living that. She quite um, magic. literally came and picked me up from my apartment in Arkansas and brought my ass here to Los Angeles. <laughs> I mean, I don't, and we nice. Know, I've never been here, and I'm, I'm. We're working on stuff together, and and I've got stuff going on. She's got stuff going on, and I'm in LA and Vegas. Like, what the hell? I just thought it was only in TV. I'm from South Texas. This is crazy. Like, it's huge. I love it though. I really do. It's cool. Yeah. It's called it's stranger than fiction, man. Stranger than fiction. I'm actually I'm excited to talk about Jeremy's album. Really, let's let's chat about it. Um, so- All right. All right. Well, first things first. Let me tell the listeners what album I chose, so they know what we're yes. talking about. And my album is Within Temptations, The Unforgiven, which. Shot in the dark. 
this is the album that introduced me to this band though it's by far from their first one but i found this band randomly on youtube back like five six years ago and in my european metal one of my european metal phases and i found this dutch metal band named within temptation i heard one song off the cd first i was like who are these people and it was just freaking from then on i was obsessed with them i mean this album itself has like six comic book issues and three short movies to go along with it like to do a story for it it's like that's like that, that's what made me love this band so much. And plus, I mean, the lead singer being gorgeous didn't hurt either when I saw the video. <laughs> All right, so, now the truth comes out of why you were listening to this music. <laughs> no, that's that's why I kept watching the video at first. And the mu- <laughs> the music okay, made me stay okay, with it. The music the, drew you in, and then you stayed for the girl. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it goes both ways with that. But, I mean... I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I saw the first video on like a Nightwish related playlist. So, I mean, and Nightwish and them are pretty close, I think, at least to me. Yeah, but, I mean, it, but, you're not wrong. Yeah, they're they're definitely in in the same lane. So, Gigi, what do you think of the album? Well, I was loving the album because it reminded me of Evanescence, who was huge when I got my first record deal with Island Def Jam. And it just brought me back to that whole um, powerhouse female fronted alternative rock sound. And I love that it's edgy and indie. And you can tell that she's just like a badass <laughs> from the music. So, um, and she is really pretty. And yeah, she, she is really pretty. So, I mean, I was definitely, definitely feeling it because it brought me back to you know kind of a time and place for me in music in new york city and a whole scene that i was a part of and it just really felt like the soundtracks that i would listen to at that time you know what's funny actually and this is another synchronization for you there chancy is that when i when i got when i listened to the whole within temptation album the next thing came on i'm pretty sure it was evident evanescence it came wow. like spotify and I'm, and actually when i was listening to the uh, gg cd the, the first song come on after Billy Joel was Sticks. So oh I was like, <laughs> so that's funny because I really drew a band of Sticks and then like, <laughs> and vice versa. And it just went that way for both of my Spotify playlists, which is weird. Yeah. But, that is interesting. No, I, I know that the um, whole, um, you know, point of the show is to be able to like t- name songs. Um, and I think, and I, I apologize for my delirious state and having like driven cross country and kind of listening to this music with, you know, um, just in the car in, we've been just kind of like living with it. And it's more, I was drawn into just the vibe and the energy and how it made me feel. So that's, that was kind of the experience that I've had with both of your albums. Oh, it's, it's all good. I mean, we, if you're driving, we don't expect you to freaking sit there and write down song names i mean right. i used to i mean i used to do it for my previous position i had like a month ago for my job and but i used to almost get into freaking accidents because i'd be sitting there a messenger typing my, myself messages about what songs to put in my list but sure no fun it to- was definitely yeah, fun times it's uh it's, it's it's as real as it gets but it's really great to be just kind of brought back to the vibes that were really popular when i was first coming up in the industry and what was going on, what I was it's hearing the on the radio. Thing with, it's the same thing with fashion, music, styles, go, come back, go, come back. You get the eighties, come back, seventies, classic, Doris, even like slow melody ballad, like just, it all loops around. It's full circle, fashion, music, everything that was comes back. Cause it's just, you know, it is what it is. Music never dies. Fashion never dies. And like all styles of music make their rounds and come back. And I feel like, Right now, we're seeing a comeback of like that. Like in the early 2000s, there was very much this like you know like blow up of like alternative kind of like rock mixed with pop, but you know more rock and kind of like warp tour vibes and things like that. And I feel like we're seeing a lot more of that nowadays. I, I feel like in the last year, it's we've seen so many artists even transition genres. For instance, like MGK, like I just it's it's just crazy how people are literally switching genres and going right. to rock and uh, punk and all that. And it's just, you know, it's like it's incredible to see the full circle of it. Just it's amazing. It really is. I wish some other styles of music would make it back. I'm really into 
like Linda Ronstadt, Patsy Cline, Carol King. I love classic. Oh my music. God, Patsy Cline, dude, I love for Patsy real. Cline. First day, um, I really, I wish that I wish there was still spots for, you know, things like that to come back. But that's such an, it's such an older, classic, or beautiful kind of like simpler time. I feel like things are so like split now. Like as Brock was sp speaking on, like you know, things are just kind of like universes are colliding, and it's just like so many new versions of sounds and music are coming out. It's like, it's insane. It really is. But yeah. Yeah. I. Uh... I love it. I actually well, I, I agree with what you're saying up to the point to where you're talking about the named artists. And I think that the reason that you that we haven't seen something like that come back and I'm going to drop a name to kind of show how that's the case. And it's Amy Winehouse. So, like, the reason behind that is because the talent behind those specific artists like Patsy Cline and Linda Ronstadt they have their own iconic sound yeah exactly. that was that was that right that 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 actually wasn't her. i didn't hear anything resembling that until i heard amy winehouse and i was like what is this when did this come out yeah but yeah it was awesome well chancy what do you think of my cd still waiting to get your review buddy uh honestly I was like, I was like, I, I was on that because I, I remember you had mentioned it was a concept album. So I was like, but I had kind of forgotten. So I wasn't sure. I was like, man, this feels really bipolar for some reason. And then I was like, wait, he said it's a concept album. So I went back and I was listening to it again. And I was like, oh, OK. Like, OK, I get this now. This makes sense. And then I I honestly there's that there's not much like i can't roast it i can't i can't roast it because there's nothing really to, there's nothing really to talk down about on it like i felt that way about all three of the albums really is that there was just there was nothing really bad that one could say i uh i mean i was unexpectedly surprised i was i was really happy with it glad to hear that glad to hear that so, since it's my album, I'll do my top five first. And no, I'm not pulling a Jeremy Chansey. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I almost could have. I almost could have. But I just, there are certain songs in this that I would normally skip over if I was listening to the whole CD. So, but the four humble mentions I had were <laughs> funny. Or in the middle of the night, funny enough. Yeah, right. Uh, Fire and Ice. Iron and Faster, because those are. It's funny because I think two of those they actually did music videos for as well. But there's just five songs that are better on the album than those four, and those were the ones I couldn't leave out. Like all the other ones, I'm not going to mention. But number five is Where's the Edge? Because I love that song. Like that song's just that. That remind actually that song right there is the one that reminds me of Evanescence the most. Is that song right there? Like that's. But yeah, and number four is Shot in the Dark, because like the CD just goes from the intro and blasts into that song, and I love that song. I hear it's like a freaking metal song, like so metal. Like, mm. I can't even think I can compare it to, because I mean, with the temptation, does they were trying to they were trying to use like '80s and like '90s like sound in the CD, but they. They're, they're so original that they, even if they try to use other sounds, it just sounds original to them. Like, they don't sound like people from the 80s and 90s as much as they think they would. Number three is Lost, because I love how it starts off slow. Then once she gets that first chorus note, she belts out that I'm buried alive. Like, it's just, mm. that song is like eargasm, true eargasm. <laughs> Number two, of course, is a Demon's Fate because I like how dark that is. And I read the comics online somewhat for that go to the CD, and a Demon's Fate just plays really well into the one character's story, like at the end. Like it's just the lyrics match it so perfectly. You have to you really have to read the comics and like watch the videos to get the CD. You really do. But number one is the song that got me into with Intemptation to begin with. And that's because I saw the music video, which I did send a chance earlier today. But 
Sinead or Sine, however you hell you want to say it. I thought she Sinead. said Sinead, yeah. It, she, the way she says it, it's hard to actually hear what she's saying. Like it sounds just like one smooth like word, like one smooth uh, like I, letter, basically. I took it like Sinead O'Connor, really, is kind of how it looked in, yeah, in the lyrics. Yeah, I mean that's how that's how it's spelled, but it sounds different in the video too. That's the weird part. But, Interesting. That's but I mean, yeah, it is. it is, and 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 basically the. The song's all about one girl and one part of her, one of the three girls in the story. It's her part basically where she's trying to get revenge and kill somebody in a club. And that's what the whole music video is them playing outside a club while she tries to murder someone in it. I mean, and that's like, creative. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's such an upbeat. It's a, exactly. It's I such an upbeat so song to that, though. You know? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've tried to murder somebody in a club. But... <laughs> hey. I'm I mean, pretty sure Tupac, T- Tupac and Biggie did. Yeah, uh, oh, she murdered us on our drive cross country. No, so she really did. Yeah. I mean, but Sinead is just amazing. Like that's, I mean, it's so upbeat for that freaking idea too. Like just like the fact that it's so upbeat, and it's all about her fucking walking through a club with a gun. Like that's the funniest part. And, like, <laughs> It's right, basically so like and it, to go and listen, re-listen to this song. Oh yeah. Now that I really know the story behind it, no, and that's so right? cool that there's comics. Wait, wait, and... wait till you get done driving and watch the actual video. That's what I say. Okay. Okay. Because I, I mean, and Chancy, you're gonna love this part. The funniest part is that for most of the video, the drummer's in like a gimp suit. <laughs> for no reason no identifiable no identifiable reason why this person's in a gimp suit but yeah i mean he's just playing the drums in full leather and it's like what the fuck is going on here and like i i never even noticed him in the background doing that until like i read a comment on youtube and someone pointed it out i'm like oh yeah <laughs> like because you know the drummer's in the background no one's looking at him like you're looking at the beautiful woman that's singing the song, not him. Right. It's or like, you're looking at the actual like, or you're looking at the storyline going on in the video. Like you're not looking. Like they go back and forth between the storyline and the band, but like it's just. Uh, I mean, that was probably his it. argument before shooting. Is like, I'll bet nobody will even notice. They're gonna be too busy looking at you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, Gigi, were there any songs that stuck out to you in this at all, or no? Well, hey, I mean, after this conversation, I'm going to go back and listen to Sinead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Clay Baby and I are going to be listening to, for sure. Um, you know, again, I was just, like, really felt like I was back in time in New York City and in, in Hell's Kitchen, where I was living and listening to that style of music, and it was a moment that brought me back to my first record deal, and I was just kind of taken in by um, just the whole energy of it. That's awesome. It's a big nostalgia it vibe on the show today. Yeah, you know, I mean... Yeah, and like I said, Evanescence played at the end of mine, so it's a whole freaking right. weird when you said that. I'm like, I'm yeah, like, no, what? I love that. And I, as a female artist, I love seeing badass females doing their thing and really crushing it and um, incredible signature voices and strong women, so that's always really appealing to me as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, so, sorry, I got freaking girls I know that are on filter try and tell me stop doing my podcast and go watch them I'm like yeah no thank you I'm good I'd rather do my <laughs> show but then watch you try to get money out of me but so Chancy what were your top five sir well I did have a honorable mention which is in the middle of the night only because of its connectivity to river of dreams because I, I was that. literally I was just like Yep, it's I like I was listening to it and I was like, oh, it's going on the list just because anyway, just just because. And uh my number five was Shot in the Dark because I was just like at first when I saw it, I was like, ooh, I'll bet Ozzy's pissed. And then I listened to it and I was like, nah, probably not. And uh my number four was uh Iron. Thought that was a really awesome song. A lot of it had really good guitar parts to it. I, I, I you know, play a little bit of guitar. Um, 
that's one of the things that really kind of caught my ear the, like right out the gate was like the sound of the guitar like the amount of distortion or depending like you could kind of get a feel for the song before she even sang the first word based on the tempo speed and distortion uh, uh not tempo and speed are pretty much the same thing i meant to say like uh tempo and distortion of of the guitar itself uh number three was murder was because you know that's like the one song i like knew right away was going on my list like Ooh, right after Sinead, i'm gonna go listen to murder again <laughs> <laughs> uh number two for me was uh, sk- uh stairway to the skies i was like dude that's pretty that's, that's pretty fucking title. awesome right that, that, yeah. i it is an amazing song and like at that point i said i don't want to make my honorable mentions any longer but it was just it reminds me of stairway to heaven in a lot of ways but now jeremy if you were to take a huge stab at what my number one is what do you think it would be a demon's fate why not me? Oh, the intro. Yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fucking. Well, it, it, I did put why not me because I knew I had to fuck with you. There's been this raw, like it's been a running thing on the show where if there's like an intro or anything that's like a really short segment and like that's considered as a track on the album, I always make it like my number one just to just needle him. It started off as a happy accident with songs like the uh, like the song off of Hybrid Theory from uh, Lincoln Park, where they have the DJ just spin and make this whole song with no singing really at all. And I put that on my number one, and it just kind of went from there. Um, but he did call it, actually. I did have A Demon's Fate as my number one because... I- it's a I good fucking chances. song, you know? I mean, and it yeah, really... Yeah, it's such a great title. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's a damn good song. And honestly, I was happy I picked this album after I started listening to it because I'm like, I forgot how good this album is. I haven't listened to it in so long. Like, I forgot how good it is. Shit. Like, <laughs> maybe I picked this one. There's some other ones that are, like, not as great, but they're still good, but they're not as great. But all right, Chancey, finish us off. Tell us about your album you picked. Uh, my album, it's got a really, really big special place in my heart, man. Uh, the whole band does really, um, I was actually introduced to the band by an ex of mine and, uh, meds out of most of their albums. Maybe. Got to take your meds, baby. Did you forget to take your meds? Is probably one of my favorites, mostly because of the fact of the ability to just turn it on and let it play. And uh, just so much that I can flash back to just instantaneously just listening to the album and to the songs and the meanings behind the songs and the lyrics it it just has me some kind of way you know that's amazing it's awesome to hear you talk about how much it's meant to you for sure i mean i was interested to find out that uh like their first album came out it was i i at the very least it was in june of then I don't remember the exact year in the nineties, but I want to say it was on my birthday in the nineties was when their first album came out. And I was like, Oh, that's fucking awesome. So it was meant to be right. And it was on your birthday. Right. Would you like me to roll into my, Oh wait, no, uh, Gigi. I just want to say like this album is reminding me of Nirvana and but like in the best of ways where it was raw. I loved how organic it is in a moment in time where I'm kind of returning to my organic roots with music. It just felt really cool to kind of listen to it and, you know, vibe with it. It's definitely an album that I want to like 
dive into even more. All right. Well, Jancy, I'll be sure to tell you this album. Yeah, it definitely wasn't my favorite album today. That's for damn sure. I didn't <laughs> I figure actually it would to, be. I listened to it first, actually, because I'm like, all right, let's get this one out of the way because I know I'm gonna like the other two better. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I do and like, I mean, you, you know my music taste, Chancy, so I don't have to explain too much yeah, to no, you. I'm, but, like I said, I'm not. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's once I started, expect it. Once I got a few songs in, like I heard elements of Marilyn Manson in there and shit. I'm like, all right, no, all right. exactly I, what I was just about to fucking say. I was like, aren't you talking? Isn't that the yeah. one that was giving yeah. me Marilyn Manson vibes? Yeah. And it was fucking rad. Like, like certain songs, like the metal grating in the background, like that reminds me of Marilyn Manson and a hundred percent, like early Marilyn Manson when he was amazing still. I mean, he's still good, but now his stuff's just 180 different. But I mean, this CD was, okay. I was able to get a top five and two honorable mentions out of it. So it wasn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's good enough for me for sure. <laughs> that one so had chance. Like, gothic-y, like pretty sound to it. It was like really like, like hard metal or not hard metal nah it was like i don't know it was very like it was almost like a like a rock ballad kind of but with like Marilyn kind of like in the background a little bit it kind of felt that like it was pretty i liked it very melancholy in its vibe yeah 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 it's very like you can sit in the couch and just sink in the couch and listen to it and like just be like in your fucking head you know what i mean but not like in a bad way like yeah i mean i yeah completely i mean i i mean I, at certain points i was checking to be like how many songs left in this thing but <laughs> yeah. it's definitely like a different mood it's like a different mood oh yeah i mean but so chancy your cd what are your top five buddy um i i don't have any honorable mentions um <clears throat> you're pulling a jeremy aren't you no no, I'm not going to do that either. This honestly, I I didn't even have to like I actually okay. There's I had to play one song to make sure that it was the song that I thought that it was. Everything else was literally off the top of my head. Just wrote it down because I knew inherently. Um. Uh, number five is uh song to say goodbye. Because the uh, ambiance and the meaning of the song, it it's a song, it's a tale about uh, dealing with someone who, like, you know, suffered from addiction to the point to where you no longer even want to tolerate dealing with it. But because you love and care for them so much that you absolutely will bend over backwards to attempt to save their life at any turn. Uh, Like uh, the case in point, I always thought it was like the very first line in the whole song is um, uh, you are one of God's mistakes. You lying, you know, you tragic west or wasting. uh, What is it? Space of skin, piece I of love skin. It. Yes. Um, what is it? You don't know how it aches. Uh, it's just like it breaks it all down, and then like the chorus changes tempo, and then it's just like, my oh my, a song to say goodbye. Uh, number four was because I want you, and that was like I was saying. However, it just changes up. Because, and that was the one that I had to play to make sure that it was the one I thought it was because it, like, there's a very melancholy ambiance to the album itself, but this song is still in that range, but at the same time, it starts off with a very upbeat, duck, 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 fall into you is all I seem to do, and it just, like, breaks into the song, and it's a very up-tempo and catchy little bit. Uh, number three for me was uh, Piero the Clown I because it. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, Pagliacci the Clown joke. I don't know if any of you, I don't know if any of either of I you two. I don't know that. Do you know the joke, Jeremy? 
I don't believe I do, unless I heard it and didn't hear the name of it. Uh, man goes to the doctor, tells the doctor that he is, you know, depressed and realizing that the world is an ever evolving and uncertain place with drear and dread and gloom looming all around him. The doctor says, well, that's an easy fix. Pagliacci the Clown. He's coming to town this week. Go and see him. He will surely cure what ails you. Remove all your melancholy and you'll have a great time. The man begins to weep. The doctor asks him what's wrong. The man looks up and he says, Doctor, I am Pagliacci the Clown. (laughs) um and it's about the sad clown yeah Um, Yeah. (laughs) i just love how it gets people because if like they're all enthralled and then they get to the end and they're like what the fuck that's not funny uh (laughs) who else but chancy I got a fucked up sense of humor, man. Hey, yeah, at least I, I didn't I, ask him to meet my dog, all right? I feel oh, like do I not do that. From that, like, the essence of, like, as entertainers, we're always expected to be on. And yep. we have to live in this world of um, basically giving people what they want. And people don't, a lot of people don't necessarily, um, like, entertainers, a lot of the times, we're just expected to always be on. And what I take away from that is, like, yeah, he's putting on his show, he's the clown, and, like, he's doing what he's supposed to do, but he's not happy, and he's missing, like, that kind of, like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's powerful. It sounds like it's, you know, I, yeah. can, totally, I can relate to that in a lot of like ways. Like the old saying, who saved Superman, you know? Mm-hmm. The number, Lane did. Right? For sure. Uh, number two for me was Infrared, because I love the scorched earth feeling. Like, that whole song is just basically about revenge. Like, uh, uh, I believe the first verse goes, uh, it's like, one last thing before I shuffle off the planet. I will be the one to make you fall. So I come down to wish you an unhappy birthday. Yeah, that's the one. Someone called the ambulance. There's gonna be an accident. Oh wow! Like, oh yeah, that. Yeah. Really and then yeah. the and then the chorus is, uh, "I'm coming up on infrared. There is no running that can hide you. I, cause I can see in the dark. It's all just fucking empirical. Just, just empirically chasing and seeking. And I will get you. You, there's nowhere you will go where that I won't find you. Kind of stuff." And uh, number one for me is probably my favorite song by that whole band in its entire discography, and that's uh, Drag. Oh. Because, uh, I mean, it's got so many iconic lyrics like, um, you possess every trait that I lack by coincidence or by design. You're the monkey I've got on my back. That tells me to shine. Um, then there's another section where it. Uh, I just got to get off my chest. That I think you're divine. You're always ahead of the rest. While I drag behind. It's a, an amazing song. If I were to recommend one song. For you to double back on. Later Gigi. It would be definitely drag. It's a. It's a. It's it's also an easy song to play on guitar as well. It's just uh, basically E string, thick top E string, and then A string. Do 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 it's so cool to, you know, to really get to to talk to you guys about the music and these songs and to hear the impact that they've had on you. Did any songs stick out to you on Chance CD there, Gigi, or no? 
Well, um, I feel like they're taking on all of it is taking on a whole new life, honestly, like hearing, you know, hearing from you guys. I know the track when you started talking about Marilyn Manson, like that track felt um, felt different. The other ones were giving uh, me Nirvana Pixies and then that one kind of felt other and was really impactful. What's that song called? Uh, which one specifically? I'm not sure exactly. The one I'll have to check out what the title was again, but it was definitely. It was the one where it was like, do 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 do, and like he was singing, and it gave me Marilyn Manson. I was like, I love this. Like it might be my. It... You got it, Chancy. Uh, no, go ahead. You, you, I go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to think. It was like. Oh, uh, it might be. Like... All right. Well. I'm gonna go ahead and do my top five because I think it might be my number one pick that you're thinking. Oh yeah, it might. Nice. Be. It, might it might be. Um, oh, funny. Actually, Chancy, you're gonna like this because my honorable mentions you're gonna think are funny because <laughs> my honorable mention my my honorable mentions are because I want you and song say goodbye. Nice. So you're four and five of my honorable mentions. Yeah. Number five was Broken Promise. That's a good one. Because yeah, that's a damn good one. Like a lot of this like. If I listen to this CD, if I, if I heard of this band in high school, which is when the CD came out when I was in high school, like, yeah, I would have been fucking loving this CD probably, but you grow up and this stuff doesn't really relate to you as much as anymore. But four was one of a kind. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, that made, me think, that, made, that made me think about myself. <laughs> Naturally. Like, that should be my damn theme song. But number three was Infrared. Because I yeah. do love that. I do love, like, the lyrics in there are so twisted. I freaking love that song. Like, right. You, only chance he gets the dark side of me like that. But number two, and actually, okay, the Marilyn Manson song might be either one of these, number two or number one. I can't remember which one exactly it was, but number two is Post Blue. Post Blue, that was the one I was thinking of. I think. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, because that, 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 that sounds like a Marilyn Manson song name, kind of. Right. I'm pretty sure I remember it saying that. Yeah, I mean, I thought it might be—I thought it might be my number one, which was Space Monkey. But oh, Space that's Monkey, yeah, that's, a, that's another good one. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. I'm thinking it's Post Blue that they're referring to. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But when I got to Space Monkey, I was like, like that's the song on the sea that made me turn around and be like, all right, what's this? Wait now? a minute, what's this? Yeah, because like the first couple, the first couple songs were like. Ugh, like snore, like, and then all of a sudden, like second, like that. As soon as I got Space Monkey, I was like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> and plus, you know, Space Monkey. I was thinking of Q, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's another person we podcast with on one of our other shows. But it made me think of him because he's like a monkey in space, hopeless. <laughs> but. Well, we went through all three albums then, and went, well, we went down memory lane, we had some fun, and we introduced an actual pop star to new music. So, first that right time there really music, have. Yeah, that's the yeah, first time definitely. we've done pop on the on the show, isn't it? No, Jess, remember? We did. Oh, right. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this isn't even pop. This, yeah, this music is not considered I... pop compared to what we did to Jess. <laughs> but, it's true, oh yeah. God. No, it's we really did like South Garden there. To get to to get to chat with you both, and I'm definitely excited to dive in. I'm really inspired from what you had to say about the music, and I I'm gonna be tooling around LA in my Mustang and listening to these songs and these records more. So thank you for introducing me to new music. Well, absolutely, yeah. I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm excited to look into with them Temptation. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a yeah, it's a definite ride to get into them. Their new CD is all apocalyptic, like metal type stuff. It's awesome, like apocalyptic. I love that. Well, it's very on like, brand for what's going on today. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it came out in 2019, so maybe they had a little foresight into something we didn't know about. But that was a year pre-COVID. But but I mean, yeah, they actually have a new CD coming out next year. Apparently, they just announced today. Talk nice. about timing. But, but yeah, uh, Gigi, please tell the people where they can find 
tell the people what you have coming out, where they can find your music. Oh, thank you so much. I have a new album coming out called Laura. I'm Gigi Rowe, G-I-G-I-R-O-W-E. Very easy to find anywhere you stream music. I'm here with Clay Baby, and we have a bunch of records that are just awesome, and they're going to be coming out. Clay Baby, you want to want to say anything just that we're fixing to take shit by storm and to keep your eyes and ears open because you damn sure finna hear something that we put out <laughs> yes well we thank you for coming on 100 percent, and that means that it's time chance to discuss next week's guest indeed and we had we had our fiance last week i keep forgetting they're engaged but we had our fiance last week and next week we are going to have the misty rain a underground rapper and a juggalette of instagram which is how i found her to begin with but that was years ago now she's a rapper yeah i'm actually like that's more of my forte i love like very inspired by like missy elliott eve like lil cam biggie smalls like like but I love hip hop. So underground hip hop artists are like super important because it's what makes hip hop hip hop. Like Exactly. Exactly. And every hip hop artist is underground to begin with, if you were thinking yeah, about it. Sure, but sure. And Chancy, do you know what C D you're bringing next week for her? Yes. I'm actually uh going to bring the album that I had discussed when her fiance had been on the show. I will choose Eminem's The Slim Shady EP. You're kidding just, me, motherfucker. You're kidding just me. to make you fucking <laughs> sit in it. Just stew, buddy. I actually saw a reel today about what if Slim Shady... What if my name is had a freaking uh, metal guitar in the middle, like doing riffs? And it <laughs> That'd be pretty, awesome. It actually sounded pretty dope along with the song, but... Alright, you're bringing Slim Anus, and... I guess I have to bring the real rap into this. So <laughs> I'm bringing Axe Murder Boys cut and stitched. Nice. Chancey's like, I have to write this down. <laughs> I, I, every day, every week, every week. You said cut and stitched, right? Sounds like good I'll send you it. Oh, they, they will be. And I'm not sure what Missy's bringing yet, but I'll find out in the next day or two, probably. So. That's cool. And, well, Chancy, where can they find you in the one place they can? Yeah, right. I, I, I reside myself to the Book of Faces, uh, the Bracket Bastard podcast, and right here, rested up inside the cube. And as always, you can find both of us on the Paranormal, the New Normal, slash Maniacal Music Musings podcast with an S group. And you can find me on Twitter and the gram as at Juggalo Bastard. And we ah, thank our guest. Thank you. We thank our guest Gigi for coming on once again. It was, it's it's been months of me e- emailing people back and forth to get you on, but I'm happy it worked out. Absolutely, yeah. as am I. I really appreciate meeting both of you, and thanks for chatting. Of course, and if you don't mind, I will throw one of your songs in to open the episode. That would be incredible. Thank you so much. Will do. And we thank all our listeners for listening and our watchers for watching. We'll see you next week. Yay! Bye, guys! A quiet shelter from the storm A sliver of hope, something more Turn the lights back on for us Show you I'm here with just my touch When the time comes, I'm gonna know what to do When the day breaks, I'm gonna be here with you I'm gonna stay here, wanna tell you a story only I can tell When the
the tide's change, I'm gonna know what to do When the day breaks, I'm gonna show it to you If it all comes crashing down, at least we set the fire ourselves La 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 Need you babe to feel Promises I can't keep When the time comes I'm gonna know what to do When the day breaks I'm gonna be here with you I'm gonna stay here Wanna tell you a story Only I can tell When the tides change I'm gonna know what to do When the day breaks I'm gonna show it to you If it all comes crashing down At least we said the fire ourselves